Uh, have you encountered any resistance from certain members of your organization when it comes to implementing new technology? And if yes, how did you address those concerns? All the time uh, in terms of uh, encountering <laughs> adversity there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the projects I've worked on have been fairly large and, and transformational. And so you are kind of uh, quite often replatforming, rechanging everything from how they've worked from the ground up. Uh, I think in most cases, I was I was lucky early on in my career. I had a mentor who sort of advised me of uh, a pre-engagement, and this this applies not just to digital projects, but with any kind of uh, presentation, stake, uh, stakeholder sign offs or anything. Was uh, the general premise was if you're going in a room and you have you know the CTO, the CMO, the CFO all going to be sitting in there, and you need to get them all to sign off. Uh, the advice was make sure that they've already said yes before the meeting starts. So you would try and, again, it's not always possible, not always feasible to say, hey, look, I'd also need an extra hour of your time to talk you through things. But they're getting them on that journey early on and being able to sort of say, all right, and if people, it's almost like an inception-like experience where if if they feel like they've added to the, the sort of the story as it was being uh, created, then by the end, there's less surprises. You know, the, the biggest upsets I've seen are where, you get into a meeting and everyone's brand new to the idea and then suddenly one little red flag comes up going oh hold on but what about this and then somebody else gets another one and another one so having that pre-engagement to try and make sure that you hopefully can get in there and say without saying but going look we've all agreed on this already we all know what's happening and what it's going to do so is there any concerns and sometimes you know what their concerns are up front so you can even build that into sort of the the stakeholder discussion to say look you know we know we were going to uh, perform these tasks and we know that there's some reservations around supply chain but we plan to mitigate it by doing that so having that all kind of ready to go on the deck means it's a bit more of a smoother meeting i feel like we have had the same mentor <laughs> 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 just because um i as well have have been through that and uh, also one of that those early pieces of advice is where if you're running a new project or you're implementing something that's very new and people you know, may have a lot of questions about it, go and speak to each of the stakeholders individually beforehand and bring them across, get them on board early, bring their ideas in. Um, and then, yeah, when you're presenting that to everyone, everyone, it's a known quantity. So yeah. there shouldn't be any red flags by that point. Um, it's a great piece of advice. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's part of uh it, it seems simple enough, but uh, you know, a lot of times, especially if you're if you're newer in the industry and sort of getting that confidence to be approaching you know some some of these people are uh you know well outside of your sort of grade in terms of seniority and trying to get their time to say oh look hey by the way i need you know trying to frame it up rather than just saying oh look i want to have a chat and they think well what is this you know this, i'm busy today you've got to make sure that you go look i want to have a chat about you know and you know, I hear some of those old older kind of terminologies where you've got i think was it the is it Harvard Business Review or something? They've got a COTS, which is like your meeting request should say, what is the purpose? What is the outcome? Yep. What is the decision makers and instructor and whatnot? So having having that in there so they can sort of look at it and go, yeah, all right, I, I already know about this project. Because a lot of times, hopefully, it's not too much of a surprise anyway. They know the project you're talking about because you're talking lots of money and lots of people. And so they go, oh, yeah, I know what that that's about. So, yeah, that's definitely how that discussion. Uh, and they might say, oh, look, I'm pretty familiar. So we can cut that down to a 15 minute coffee. Or they say, no, I'm pretty concerned about that. Let's lock in a lot of time and bring bring an army of people to help have this discussion. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I can, I can see that playing out with replatforming, as you mentioned earlier. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so actually, how many times have you had to replatform? And do you get sick of it? <laughs> not not really sick of it there's been a lot let's see so within one company i probably did six which was like an e-commerce a crm a loyalty a field force another e-commerce which is for cheaper licensing uh some analytics tools and whatnot and then uh, more recently, there's been another probably three or so. Um, so, so yeah, quite quite a lot over the years. That uh, a range of whole whole different things. Uh, there's definitely certain flavors that you kind of you know what's going to be painful up front. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's like things like CRM is is probably one of the ones that you stumble into most because it's something that seems so simple, and especially if you're coming, you know, from some places that are using just Excel and and competing with that 
the notion of what people expect and what they can do again in their current workflow. So you go, oh, look, you know, you currently have, if you want to add in an extra field into Excel, it's right, right click insert column. And they go, oh, that's sales promotion March, you know, yes or no. But that, that concept playing into a CRM system, which you want to have as much structured data and controls, and then suddenly saying, oh, actually, we want to add an extra field. Oh, that's going to take a few months and you need digital teams involvement and you need sign off and people are fairly, fairly hard on that to, to come to that sort of realisation of what the importance is of data clean, uh, clarity and cleanliness, uh, and, but also trying to be as open as possible so that the business can be more uh, reactive when something changes in the market. Yeah, I, I think I've done uh, one CRM and three other different platforms um, in my time, which isn't many at all. But I think after doing the first one, um, I came to realize that the most important things were having a, the, the planning is key uh, outside of the product selection. Uh, and then secondly, like what are all of the gotchas that are going to come up over time? Because once it's implemented and people are using it, you're still implementing things six months later. Yeah, so it just doesn't absolutely. stop. <laughs> yeah, and it's got to be, it's kind of locked in. Yeah. You know, uh, I remember in CRM in particular, I remember a story I often tell, but war stories I find help sell people because they know you've been through the trenches a bit. And so, you know, one example we had was where we're doing yeah, a global Salesforce kind of rollout and sort of I'd come across and was just sort of listing out going, oh, you know, name, business name, and got to address and hit huge amount of roadblocks because there was multiple countries it was being rolled out in and we couldn't agree on what uh, a postcode would be australia being four digits whereas the uk at six digits with a hyphen and can be letters and numbers new zealand's got it in so then saying all right well we all call it postcode but and we want it to be restricted that you don't want somebody in australia entering five digits and just having wrong information but then how do you uh, sort of have that level of customization for each market without it being restricted either yeah, I yeah I think um, at the moment we're grappling with um, uh, we're we're go, still we're still implementing CRM uh, here and we've mm. we've we're, I think we're maybe seven months into it um, and we're mm. just fine tuning things, uh, but not being able to do certain things like country country list in a drop down, and it's oh, yeah. free form so not not using it because of that because people will just put anything in there and then you've got a, a data cleanliness issue. Mm, yeah, absolutely.